Hello there, my name is Matthew van der Put, or van der Putte. I'm a Belgian slash Australian time-lapse photographer, and today I'm teaching you how to shoot the night sky. First up, you need to be in the right location at the right time of year. Dark skies are usually a couple of hours drive away from major cities and towns, which is quite easy to get to if you live in Australia. Australia is one of the best countries in the world when it comes to astrophotography and the lack of light pollution. You can shoot stars all year round, there's no issue with that, but the most captivating photos usually feature the galactic core or the center of the Milky Way, it's the center of the galaxy that we're, you know, tumbling around in. To capture that, you need to keep the moon cycle in mind as well as the time of year. In the Southern Hemisphere, we can shoot the galactic core from May till September with a peak in July. You also want to keep the moon cycle in mind. A new moon, which is, you know, dark, gives you the most darkness, not a surprise there. But a little bit of moonlight can throw quite a bit of nice light on your foreground. All right, next up, gear. We're shooting in the dark and we want to capture as much light as possible. So, first up, a full frame camera really helps with that because it's a full frame, the pixels are bigger and they capture more light. Secondly, your lens. You want to shoot with fast glass, which means that your aperture is quite big, lets through a lot of light. So lenses with apertures like f1.4, 1.8 or even 2.8 work really well for Astro. Your focal length can change, doesn't really matter too much, but you do got to keep in mind that the longer the focal length you choose, the shorter your possible exposures. I'll talk more about that later. You're going to want to use a very sturdy tripod so as to not shake the camera and also a remote or a delayed shutter to trigger your photos. To stop dew from forming on the front of your lens, I recommend just mounting a hand warmer on the bottom to keep the lens warm enough so the water in the air doesn't condensate on the front of your lens. Also, a red head torch at night is really useful because it doesn't reset the sensitivity in your eyeballs. Thirdly, camera settings. Start by setting your camera to manual mode and make sure you're shooting raw photos. We're going to be using these raw photos, which is pretty much just raw sensor data to edit them later on. A raw file gives you much better flexibility in post to color grade your image. Turn off your image stabilization and turn off your noise reduction. We'll be doing noise reduction in post anyway and it slows down your camera. Switch to manual focus, open up your aperture as far as it goes, turn on live view and point your camera to the skies. Try to find a bright star or a bright planet and then use your focus ring to focus until the stars are as small as possible. You can use the digital zoom on your live view as well to help you with that. When the star is at its smallest, that is when your image is in focus. Then find a nice composition you like, set your ISO to something like 2000 and your shutter speed to 15 seconds. This is a starting point and we'll adjust it later on. Make sure you use that external remote or a two second delay trigger so as to not shake the camera while it's exposing. Once the camera is done, have a look at the photo, check out the histogram and see if it's too bright or too dark and adjust your settings accordingly. Zoom in as well on that photo you just took because if the stars are little stripes and not dots, this means that your exposure is too long. Once you're happy with the composition and your exposure, play around with light painting. Use your phone or a torch to add some light to your foreground. Keep playing around and have fun with it. There are few things as captivating and as addictive as astrophotography. Good luck and happy shooting.